What's up? What's up, everybody? How are you this evening? It is a new year. Just uh, welcome to another show of Brown Sugar Confessions as we talk about all things sex and relationships and pop culture. And guys, we are here for another year. It is what, 2023. Dang, on, time is moving. We just got the 22 and now we're in 23. I can't believe it. You know, I'm sure everyone, or we hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas and that you had a blessed and safe new year. Um, we have a great show for you tonight as we delve into some topics around relationships. It's a new year. You know, we're all making those or you made those resolutions, right? Come on. No, Trees, you didn't make one? No, no, I absolutely did. not. <laughs> I, I made a couple. I won't, you know, we probably won't hold them but a couple of days, but I made them anyway. Okay. I did. And uh, so we're going to talk about relationships because we're all wanting to have better relationships, better sex. And so that's what we're going to dedicate tonight's show to. So let's just jump into the show. So Miss KD, look at you looking like, is that a flower headband? You look like a flower child down there. How are you tonight? Hey guys, happy new year. Happy new year, Dr. Val. Happy hey, new hey. year, Tracy. Happy new year, listeners. We missed you. I missed you. Um, since we do not have our lovely Miss T with us today, let me start off with saying our new year was so warm, especially after sitting in like five degrees for like the entirety of like the holiday season for earlier parts near Christmas. So it was really nice being able, we went outside, we sat at the fire pit, went for a couple of walks, and I really had a wonderful and a very chill and relaxed New Year. So I'm just happy to be here. I don't have any specific resolutions, but my resolution to a certain extent is just to try to continue to grow and to be happy. I'm keeping it simple. I'm not stressing myself out with weight loss. We, we all know oh, what needs to happen there anyway. So we're just going to try to work on one. happiness and growth. That's oh, it for me. How about you? One. You know, that's a really good one. I'll tell y'all's mind at the end. You know, mine's is long because I'd make my husband do it with me. And then I make him write a journal out. And he's like so over me every year. I make him do this. He's like, you're not going to keep out the line. I'm doing this BS with you just to make you shut up. But yeah, we do do a long way. But I'll tell you all my little minute. So, Miss Treese, what's up with you, gorgeous? Uh, we missed you. We're so glad that you're back. Did you have a wonderful holiday? Did you relax a little bit? I relaxed as much as I possibly could. I had a really good New Year's. I got three new wigs. Um, I am excited because they're from a very well-known wig designer and they cost like $2,000. That was my Christmas gift. I'm super excited. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lord. Oh, yeah, I need, you need to take photos. We need to, we need, we need reviews yes. for this. Yes. I'm doing a whole, this wig. I've already booked a photo shoot. I've already oh. booked a photo shoot. <laughs> Good. Yeah, you need so, to, that's a that's a whole nother level. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I've just been living my life and you know, do I have New Year's resolutions? No. I I gave those up quite a while because here's what I realized. You have to have a level of self-mastery to complete those and not feel bad halfway through the year when you have not done what you were supposed to do. So why am I making myself feel bad and in August, when I should be on the beach living my life, I'm not doing it to myself anymore. My, I mm. do have a yearly goal. And my yearly goal is to take better care of myself, the people I love, and then outward into the circle. That's Aww. it. You guys are so deep. And, 
You know, I've made my husband write down financial goals. We're going to do better with our spending habits. <laughs> she is not I, playing. She is I, not playing at all. <laughs> not. Like, we're going to do better with our spending. Or uh, No, that's what he put down. Like, I need to do better with my spending. He's like, you need to get off of TikTok. Every little stupid gadget comes on TikTok. So I <laughs> bought, look, you know what ticks this man off the most? I'm not going to lie, right? This is the honest God, it's truth. I was watching one of these influencers and they had this vacuum for the sheets, you know, that you put on your bed. So you vacuum off your mm-hmm. sheets and they're supposed to have this like infrared uh, gadget on the vacuum that kills like the mites on your sheets. So oh I bought this thing, right? My husband, he almost was flipped the non-hair that he has on his head. If he did not get tight with me, <laughs> this is now the end of your TikTok spending on BS. <laughs> that who in the heck? He didn't say heck because we can't cuss. Buys a vacuum cleaner for the sheets. He's like, "What are you gonna do? Vacuum up your farts?" He was making. <laughs> Oh, that one on the list of my TikTok spending. But yeah, so, you know, that's kind of what we, we have a long resolution. Do we <laughs> stick to it? No, because we'll be off of it by next week. But anyway, you know, we go through the exercise of us fighting and then bonding because, hey, that's what we do in our relationship. <laughs> if you want to get something for your bed, get a steamer. Mm-hmm. Tell me, did something else? I, I hear I'm about to go on TikTok look, and find a steamer. But it kills what? the germs. It kills the germs. Steam your steamer? bed. Yeah. Okay. So as we know, you're supposed to be washing your pillowcases a minimum of two times a week. So once right. every yes, three I days do. to to keep your face clean and all that stuff. Well, if you forget, or you just you know you don't have time to do all that, right? If you steam your your stuff, you are actually uh-huh. killing the germs in the bed. That's what I have. I st- I steam my bed, but I'm a Virgo. You steam your bed. I steam my pillows. I steam my bed. A- as I go and I layer my bed, I steam. And it mm. knocks out all the wrinkles. And I-, I hate a wrinkle bed. But it's Me one of the things too. I do. Am I the- yeah. Oh, I'm not the only one that hates wrinkled sheets. Oh, I want to fight you. <sighs> I want to fight. One time, my partner put wrinkled sheets on the bed and I stared at him for like 20 minutes until he fixed it. I cannot. I can feel the wrinkle (laughs) under my skin. I'm like, you know, the the bedtime story. I I, I swear to you, KD, it's true. Like, you know, the princess and the pea. I'm the princess and the pea story because I can feel the wrinkle. I'm like, I I have a bed sore. It's hurting me. He's like, you are so daggone weird. You are (laughs) strange. Why am I talking about bed sheets? I don't know. I don't know. Let's do more. All right, Trees, what's going on in your world with our hot topics? It is time, girlfriend. Hot topic time. Let's talk about it. Sound effects? Ooh, okay. we're getting fancy. <laughs> okay, so our, our hot topic, or at least my hot topic for right now, is do you know that you, can, as a woman, Mm-hmm. You can smell the difference between a married man and a single man. Did you know there is actually a study that shows that women can tell the difference between if a man is single or if he's married? It's not because he hasn't washed. <laughs> no, actually, no. <laughs> actually, no. But here, uh, on the side of that, I can okay. tell because I used to, I have a very weird sense of smell. And there are certain colognes that I absolutely despise. And a lot of single men used to wear, what is that, Axe? I despise Mm. that spray. And they would come up to me and I'd be like, ugh, no, get away from me. But anytime, I'm not even going to lie to you, anytime a married man walked by me and he had on like a really good cologne, I'd be like, ooh, I like that. But they're married, so I'm not going to do anything. I'm I'm grown past those days. But anyway, <laughs> so she says. So here's what here's what the article and study says. It says if okay. you are ha- if you're having trouble dating, 
And it's because you literally might think men stink. When doing this study, they did it on a, a test of about 300 men. Um, they had them wear white t-shirts for a couple of days and then turn them in. And when the women smelled them, they could pick out of the pile who was married and who was single. And it's absolute, yeah, and it's absolutely because single men have higher testosterone. So that means that their pheromones are a lot stronger. It always comes down to those testosterone, so those pheromones. Mm, it always comes yeah. down to those two things. Really? Yeah, but here's the opposite side of that for women. So uh, women, they couldn't actually tell who was single and who wasn't because almost 97% of the women were on birth control and birth control changes your hormones. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. I was just like, wow, why aren't men on birth control? But that's a whole other story, though. Yeah, we're going to get sidetracked. Yeah, we're going to get sidetracked. Yeah, we're going to get sidetracked. Okay, let's keep going. There was also another trick that women have done recently in the past. You probably heard of it. It's called the jabbing. And it is where you take your lotus secretions and you dot them on your pulse points. So that would be your neck behind the ears, wrist, and behind the knees. Mm -hmm. And men were attracted to that. Those women, when they did the study, those women pulled in more men. That's really? interesting. Yeah, right? It's all I want to start doing right? so, so it's not yes. just all in their head. It really does work. Yes, it really does work. Uh, and then they did a, a study alongside of this with people using uh, roll-on pheromones. And those work mm. as well. Now, what if a woman's in menopause? Uh, actually, a, it, it does work. Women uh, with uh, women that were premenopausal and in the midst of menopause, if they used uh, the pheromone, um, while they don't have high estrogen, but they still uh, the jabbed. That is so weird mm -hmm. to me. The jabbed. Uh, <laughs> I know that sounds violent, doesn't it? It sounds almost violent. It does. Uh, <laughs> you got uh, the jab. But, right? <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. I was like, the jab. Uh, <laughs> but when they did that, they actually pulled in uh, more men were coming up to them, telling them that they smelled like nice. That is right, interesting. Ladies, you don't you don't need that Gucci or that Tom Ford cologne. Just get yourself some vaginal secretions. I say we test this in oil. April. Oh, oh, you ready? I you say we ready. taste this. Let's test this in April. All right, let's do it. We're gonna do it then. Let's do it. Look, we're gonna be shooting from Jamaica in April, y'all. We got some big things coming up for brown sugar. We are going to be all over the place next year. You never know what city we're going to pop in. We're going to have some pop-ups, some shows. We're going to do some events. It's going to be a wild year for the team of Brown Sugar. So we're excited to meet our fans, to bring them on the air, to talk about all this fun stuff. And let's talk about some jabbing because, you know, do you mix it with some the Vaseline or something or oil? You no. Just, like, no, you just put no. it on your, no. You just take the secretion out, your honey and. Your, your honey, you're from your honey. Yeah. Pot. You've never heard that. Okay. So this is an old saying, your milk and my honey, and we can make our own universe. Mm. Oh, okay. That sounds sexy. Me neither. Yeah. So yeah, you take your honey and you just dab it along your pulse points mm -hmm. and go about it. Go about your business and see what happens. See if you can pick up that new sugar daddy. Hey. hey. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, guys. So you heard it on brown sugar and start your new year off right. Ladies, we want to know if this works. So, you know, by now, we want some emails from you guys. Don't be slacking on those emails. Send them to us at brownsugarconfessions at gmail.com and put the jabbing, however you spell it, we'll figure it out because we want to know if you're the jabbing and is it working? 
you know, and, mm. and you don't do it when you're on your cycle or I guess maybe they are. I don't even, you can't. I guess you could, but I'm that's, that's, a whole, like, that's a whole. That's a whole. You're delving a, into a whole different realm. I would assume yeah, if you do that. Maybe not. I, I don't know. Just use yeah. regular. Don't be extra. Be regular. Okay, don't be extra. We don't want no uh, no extra in your vajab. So, <laughs> so just use your regular secretions, and let's see what happens. I'm quite curious by that one. All right. So, you know what? I mentioned earlier that this show is going to be about relationships. And, Trees, you brought us right into a beautiful segue about why your partner won't sleep with you. So, you know, that is probably the one thing that men complain about the most is that their female partner doesn't want to have sex. And many people, whether you want to realize it or not, on their resolutions, I promise to be more intimate, honey. <laughs> it is a part of the resolution. I know you two are like, uh, not ours, but okay. I saw your <laughs> Not my struggle. Yeah, not your, I, I knew it would not be the two of you. I <laughs> knew it instantly. But it is one of the biggest things. And so we're going to talk about the actual, the top 10 reasons why people won't sleep with you. Um, and so the first one is you don't smell good. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. If you're using, look, Axe is for young teenage boys. They go to a drugstore, they get that axe, and they just spray it all over them from head to toe because you know a young a young boy. So when he takes a shower, he stinks again. He takes not even a shower. Day. Yeah, he comes. He, the must on a young adolescent boy. It I, we love you teenage boys, but God knows it's just a part of your testosterone billing in. You're just coming to your manhood, but it is a thing. So we get the axe. You know, you we can smell you a mile away. Before you come in the room. But yes, it is you don't smell good. So guys, maybe get yourself a good cologne. Always shower before you come to bed. You know, some ladies like a little musty. And if your lady likes a little musty, find out how musty she likes it. You know, she might not like it funky, funky. But a little <laughs> musty, musty might be all right. So that's an easy one, right? And the next one is, and I can concur with this one, you don't act aggressively enough. Mm. Uh, when women like that energy, they don't want to be like, you know, you guys just come in the room. Oh, you want to just do it, babe? You know, just finish watching Game of Thrones, just finish watching the football or House of Dragon or something. You come in there looking all tired, like you just want to pop one off real quick. No, they want a little, they want to see your energy. Yes, you want to feel your energy. Yo, why are y'all laughing? Why I'm a nerd. Laughing? Okay, so I'm a nerd. Here's a confession. Oh, I'm the nerd that used to like to have while watching X Files. That's me. I oh my god. That I don't I don't even know what to say to that piece. <laughs> Specifically X Files. Why X Files? Well no, not just X Files. Uh Unsolved Mysteries. Uh fair. Okay. Oh my god. So someone's Ancient literally aliens, just getting like, like yeah. so someone someone's literally getting like a, a murdered and we're trying to solve the murder and you're like, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm weird. <laughs> I'm weird. I see the side of you coming out, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I'm like the part of Scully is talking, be quiet. Okay. That, well, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seems to make you happy, beautiful. We're here for it. Okay, well, Therese likes a little aggressive watching the x file. All right. So, you know, another one is, now this one I can relate to, because this is almost like you're mad. Y'all don't help with the housework. Mm-hmm. I can believe I can it. That. I can believe that. Like, like we're tired. You don't want to help out, but yet you want us to put out. You got to be equal and be fair about it. 
you got to help us out. We got the kids. We might be working out of the house or working in the house. Or we got a lot of things going on. We know you guys do too, but it would not hurt you to maybe help us vacuum, to pick up your clothes. So they kind of, you know, it says that some women kind of hold back because you don't help with the housework. So maybe you could ask, honey, can I help you? There's nothing nicer and sexier, I think, than when my hubby helps me out in the house. When I see him helping me do some dishes and cleaning up and picking up, I like it. It does make me happy because he cares about mm-hmm. our environment. Or is that just me? Yeah. No, it's true. Okay. No, it helps. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So another thing that you guys don't think about is, and this is what I talk about on the show. I've talked about it a couple of times, probably a lot. Well, is that you're boring? Ah, huh. Whoops, my ah, drop. Ah, ah. Boom. Boring. That can go both ways. That's how I it is. all. Absolutely. Yeah. That can go both ways. You're boring yeah. or he's boring. So how do you bring some sparks into the relationship? What do you guys think? How do you bring spark into it? I do a lot mm. of stuff. I have I have a lot of tricks. Like, like what tricks do you have, Queen Um, I like to I love to role play. Love oh. I love to role play. Um and I like to go out and have intercourse in different places. Um mm. Yeah. All that kind of fun stuff, right? Yeah. It's just I one of my partners is very vanilla. I mean, like L7 vanilla. <laughs> and I don't even want to say vanilla like a bad thing because vanilla is delicious. Mm-hmm. But, this, mm-hmm. but this person is just like, I didn't even know we could have sex in the shower. <laughs> He's just very vanilla. Scared me. Scared me. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I just started adding teaching new things. Does that sound wrong? Like teaching new things. No, that doesn't sound wrong Just at all. Just hey. opening, but- opening up. I had to. I had to, or else it would have been missionary forever. Mm. And I think that's important, mm. right? You've got, to, guys, it's really critical. Here, Tree's talking right now, because it's real. To spice it up a little bit. And ladies, you got to spice it up. You know, you can just create and do whatever you want with consenting adults. You don't have to be so vanilla. You can go to some parties. You can have sex outside. You can do it in different rooms of your house. If you're an empty nester, break in every room in your house. Have fun with it. Play games. Do it outside. Lingerie, heels. You know, I don't even know why they have lingerie shops if we don't wear them for, for ourselves and our partner. I like to get dressed up. I want the attention. Mm. It's nothing better than like he's watching a game and I come out in a piece of lingerie. And if he don't look at me, I am pissed off. I will I'm burning down the house. Up. I am. I'm like, ha! I don't care if Patrick Mahone was doing whatever. I am up here in this daggone Victoria. You need to look right over here and get off Patrick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get our priorities straight. <laughs> but yes, I want to get his attention. So, ladies, guys, spice it up. You know, I saw something that a guy did that I thought was really good. He actually like stripped for his wife. That was so cute. And he had a dad bod. He was like 65, and it was on TikTok, and it went viral. It was the cutest thing Aww. to see this 65 year old dad bod just stripping for his wife to spice him up. And I, and, and women were like, that is, it was sexy because it was not expected. So guys, just get a chair. Stop being afraid. Stop being afraid. You only live once. Make this year your That's right. best sex year. 2023. Get it in. Get it in. All right. So here's us talk about a couple more because these are really fun. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Stop, stop the row. Mm, no, guess what? It's no, time no. for us. Oh, yes, it is. I know it always flies when we're having fun. So we're going to need to go ahead 
take a short break because you know we gotta we gotta pay them bills. I want you guys to go get your drinks, go get your snacks, as we like to say. And don't turn a station off. Stay right here on Power 1017 for Brown Sugar Confessions, and we will be right back. And welcome back to Brown Sugar Confessions on Power 1017. Did you guys get your drinks? Did you get your snacks? I hope you did because we got quite a second half for you tonight. Let me tell you. But before we get started, have you guys went and seen us on our YouTube channel? Make sure you do. You don't want to miss these wonderful faces. Mine, Dr. Val, Tracy. Make sure you catch all of the things. So when you get done listening to us, you can log on to YouTube the next day and see us live and in action. So make sure you go to our YouTube channel. And while you're at it, follow us on all of our social media handles. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on Spotify. Pretty much anything there is you can find us on. We'll be there. And make sure you go to TikTok and follow Dr. Val because she's going to give you some some details about how to improve your love life. She's got all sorts of fun stuff on there and you just never know what you're going to see. So you can find us on all of those platforms. (laughs) Brown Sugar Confessions. And if you have a question for Dr. Val specifically, make sure you go send her an email at Valerie, V-A-L-E-R-I-E at Swan Center, S-W-A-N-N Center.com. And if you got a question for one of us or all of us that you would like to hear on the air, have an answer on the air, or you just want to talk, say something that you want us to address. You send us an email to brownsugarconfessions at gmail.com and we will put you on the air, put your question on the air. So let's get back into it. Are you guys, let me ask you guys, are you guys a fan of wings? Yeah, I like wings. You like wings? So I don't know if you guys have ever been to Hooters. Have you been to Hooters before? No. Yes, I've been to Hooters a couple of times. Yes, I have. No, I don't know if you've noticed. You've never been to Hooters? Never. Never. <laughs> you ain't missing that much. They say <laughs> no one's going to Hooters for the wings. <laughs> Probably the breasts, but not the wings. The wings. Well, apparently a lot of Hooters have been closing down. Now, they haven't closed all their restaurants. They're still here. But I know here in my neighborhood, um, the Hooters that was nearby is gone. I don't even know where Hooters Mm -hmm. is at anymore. So if I wanted to go, it ain't there. Um, And with a lot of the Hooters closing down, I think they closed like one third of their establishments. Um, People have started speculating why they're no longer here. So according to an article, um, there was a little bit of a rumor mill going around that Hooters was shutting down because millennials are not so into boobs. Literally, their words, not mine. So there was a viral tweet that went around that claimed that um, a lot of the Hooters locations were shutting down because we're just not into boobs. We're into, you know, the other side. So, so um, they're into butts? They're, they're, is that what it is? That, that, that's what they're claiming. They're claiming, you know, our generation and younger, they're, they're much more into things but. outside of breast. That's the claim. And there was actually a study done that specifically wait, 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 reported wait, 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 wait. that. Outside of, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's outside of breast? You lost me. The butt? Yes. What? Yes. Oh, okay. I mean, all, right, all, at, right. all you got to do is look at Instagram. You can kind of figure it what? out. I think we could say but okay so they, so so the young people are into the big booties but i thought that was dying out but okay go ahead Mr. let me shut up <laughs> so there was this tweet it went viral and everyone's like yeah yeah we're not really into it but hooters they came back and was like no eh, eh, wrong wrong that's not why our resta- establishments are closing we're just you know, trying, I don't know, they didn't give a good answer. They they didn't have proof that it wasn't the reason and that their millennials just ain't interested. 
But they're claiming that's not the reason why they're shuttering. They said, we're still here. We're here to stay. We're not going anywhere. We're just shutting some of our restaurants down. And this is absolutely positively wrong, despite the study saying otherwise. But, you know, that's between them, not me. Um, so, yeah, what do you guys think? Do you think that there is a change in trend? I actually don't think it's about the lack of interest in breasts. I have a different theory. Um, but what do you What's guys think? Theory? And I'll give my theory after. I think per Instagram and TikTok, I don't know if this is true. I did see this come out actually last week um, after Christmas that um, butts are no longer in. So it's interesting mm. that the rumor mill is that um, millennials want butts because I hear the big butt phase and the BBLs, it's now going the opposite way. I guess the Kardashians hmm. are getting their butts now taking out. So, you know, yeah. it's no longer. In, yeah. And I think Cardi B also had some of her BBL reduced, right? Or something like yes, that. Yes, she really. She wow. Yeah, she yeah. had to get hers taken out. She had to get hers taken out, I think. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I hear the opposite. Now, I, I don't really know. I think that millennials, honestly, are really not in to eating out. I think they're mostly just on their phones, I, you know, watching TikToks and Instagrams. That's what I think. I, but I, I I'm an old thought farmer. you were going to say, I didn't think millennials were into eating a peach. That's what I thought you were <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to start off with this. I'm an, I'm a millennial and I'm still perplexed that folks are talking about millennials. Like we are, you know, 20 years old or something like that. Like we, we are kind of now past the target audience for a lot of this stuff. So they really shouldn't be trying to figure out what millennials think. They need to be finding out like what Gen Z and Gen Y and all them folks think, because they're exactly. the ones that's really going to be driving the future. And I don't know what they're into. I'm going to be honest. I have no idea. If you are in that generation, would you call and tell us, would you send us an email and let us know what you are into, because I want to know. But yeah, I true. think it's, it's something it's, else. Okay. What is it? So I think that we are now living in a time period in which this aesthetic, like, it's, it's just not that appealing anymore. So you got to come with something other than just this. Like, it's not that people aren't into breast or are more into butt or anything like that. I think it's just that seeing girls in shorts and being overly flirtatious is just not moving people, especially people that's younger than us. It's just, it just doesn't phase them. They're, we are talking about the Instagram world. They get to see women in far more scantily clad things than what the, the Hooters girls are wearing. And most of the time when they're going to eat, they just want to have a meal. They're not trying to be bothered by some waitress. that's like, Oh my God, you're so cute. Like they, I think that, the younger generation feels more patronized by that. So I think that their business model hasn't kept up to date with just the changing trends in general. And I think that's one of the reasons why they're downsizing. They're trying to revamp their business model and kind of figure out what's going to work for these younger, younger generations. People aren't impressed with girls in shorts no more. They really aren't going to Hooters for anything but the wings. So you need to have good wings. You need to focus on providing a service that's really going to cater to people that aren't so impressed by shorts and a tank top. So yeah, I think that's what? what it is I personally. I absolutely agree with that. It's look, you can go to fans only and get somebody T he in at you for $17 a month. Okay. Why would I, and it's in my house where I can make my own chicken wings that are deliciouser than over there. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not that I, I don't think I, neither one of my partners has ever been to one. So I don't know what they think, but I absolutely believe that the demographic, that thing is just falling out. Just like, uh, what was that weird uh, restaurant where everybody used to be like, welcome was it Cheers? It was like a Cheers restaurant where everybody had all the suspenders and which that stuff went oh, out of style. Oh, I remember that. I forget the name of it though. I remember that. Yeah, it was like a real I don't remember fun kind of kitschy place. That stuff falls out of style. And this is a younger generation where we have literally access to anything on something that fits into your wallet. A woman in a Hooters tank top with orange. I could seriously 
I'm going to Google it and I'm going to get something way better than what I would see over there. And I don't have to sit mm-hmm. in a restaurant or go or go anywhere. I can get it right here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's really true. I think so. I think the kids now, the younger generation, like you said, there there's so much that they have access to. I mean, you're taking... I'm not going to lie to you. When I was in, you know, we're going to talk about this later on. I was uh, in Vegas and a mother took her daughter to the strip club <laughs> mm. for her 21st oh birthday. I mean, you know, oh, wow. you're doing the most now. Yeah, I was, <laughs> we're going to talk about that later on, but I was a little, <laughs> but anyway, but you know, I think that there's so much that the, the younger Gen Z generation can get into that girls in tight shorts, it's not it anymore. They need to really change and revamp. I mean, Hooters was my generation. I'm like, what am I, an X factor or something? I forget what I'm called. <laughs> I think I think you are a Gen Xer. You're you're I think you're oh, a, okay. you're a Gen was, Xer, yeah. I know there was an X in there somewhere. <laughs> but I'm in that category. That was my generation. So these young kids are like, why don't I want to go see a girl on some tight shorts for when I can go to OnlyFans, you know, or I can go, you know, with my mom to a strip club. Kids <laughs> now, they doing so extra. So maybe that's really right. They got to revamp that business model to get, if they had yeah. maybe with girls in G-strings, maybe that would bring them in. Who knows? Yeah. Something, but that ain't, it ain't it that, that much, you know, because no matter what they say, despite the fact they're trying to make it seem like this, oh, folks is wrong. Things are fine. Now we know better than that. We know because otherwise y'all would be opening new restaurants and not closing them. I'm just saying. That is so true. So yeah. So Hooters, you know, good luck on your, on your, your rebranding and trying to come out with something new. We're going to see if you can keep up with your mom, you know, going to strip with your mom kind of face, but good luck and God bless you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> ah, speaking of crazy crap so y'all know i was in vegas right can we talk about it for a second because i got some i got some confession. listen i, I was waiting stuff. are you ready i was waiting we ready okay. all right so i was at mr olympia fitness um with brown sugar working as press there now I am not into fitness. If you looked at me, you would say, okay, well, why are you there? I'm not into fitness. I'm not fat and overweight, but I'm certainly not a, you know, a muscle bound chick. Um, and my husband's not either. And we went because our friend's like, hey, we got some VIP passes. Y'all want to go? We were like, we're here for the, you know, we're here for it. So let's go. So we had VIP passes and if you have not gone to Mr. Olympia, I'm going to give you what it's like. It is men and women that have these incredible bodies times 50. I saw some men that look like they were comic book characters, like truly living hulks Ooh. walking around. Ooh. And, and this one guy, I'm like, he must have been almost seven five. He must have been somebody's bodyguard. This was one of the biggest men I think I've ever seen. He was gigantuan, brother, walking around. Gigantuan. Oh, just huge. I, we were like, good God. And there were two of them. I'm like, are they twins? What's going on? I mean, two massive men. Anyway, no. so you go in there and there is... um. Every kind of, of equipment you could imagine is there. The new vendors... They have workout gear, every sport strength that you can imagine, and they have lots of competitions. For an example, they had the strongman competition. They had the hand wrestling competitions. Um, they had, yeah, it was quite interesting to see how much there was to do there. And I'm talking hundreds of thousands of people. We're going through this event and it started, I think, on Tuesday and they had it at two casinos. So it was it was like huge. So when I got there, um, they have these gorgeous bikini models and because bikini fitness is a part of it. So these women um, and their bikinis are walking on stage. They all have. And my husband and I are looking. We're like, I honestly 
can't tell one from another because they all have the same <laughs> body type. They're all size five, two, maybe, you know, really either five or two, very small, no body fat, the same kind of poses, but absolutely, mm -hmm. you know, fit. I mean, gorgeous. And they have these amazing little bikinis. So, and they're, of course, they're selling these bikinis there. So I'm like, oh, honey, you know, I want to get a bikini, you know, for, for one of our trips coming up. So I went to go pick it up and it was real, it was no bigger than a Band-Aid, girl. No bigger than a Band-Aid. <laughs> this you gonna, sucker was about, you gonna 12. Bit, you're going to need a little bit more than a Band-Aid in a couple of places. Girl, I just do need say. a more Band-Aid. Yes, honey. <laughs> $1,200. I was like, is that what those bikinis are costing? Twelve hundred. Just, to, all, just to cover, just to, just to cover a bikini, the, the ladies, yes. barely twelve hundred. And that was, and then they had oh some sale for five hundred, all made of Shawaski crystal because they want the bling factor on stage. Ooh. I mean, these bikinis were like blingy. I'll, I'm going to put some wait, videos. Wait, wait, now wait, wait, back up. Cause you said they're on, they have crystals. So how many crystals do these? Cause these are important questions that changes everything. Not a lot, it, not a lot, not a lot, but oh, you know, oh. enough. There was no material, but it's all crystallized. Gorgeous, gorgeous bikinis, but $1,200 for a little bikini that was literally the size of a band aid. I can't see it, but they're in competition mode. It's all about the bling. Um, so they were buying them. They had them on sale. Lots of good vendors going on, but we, I met some amazing people that we're going to bring on the show. So let's talk about it for a second. So we're going to have an interview with Allegra Cole in the month of January. If you don't know who Allegra is, you're going to know who she is. Allegra has aesthetics um, that are almost indescribable. I would say her breast size is a, I don't know, 50 triple Z. I don't even know what the alphabet would be. I don't even know. I mean, I showed Teresa a picture. Of, what, do you, what do you think, Teresa? I mean, you saw it, y'all. Yeah. Like, uh, Z? What, when you say bodacious, capitalize the B-O and D. That's how you do it. Yes. <laughs> yes. E extreme uh, aesthetics. Wonderful interview we're going to have. I've got a couple of snippets. I'm going to have them on YouTube. Make sure you guys go and check it out on Brown Sugar at um, Brown Sugar Confessions on YouTube. You're going to see a 15-minute video of, of her and I talking. Really amazing, beautiful woman who owns her individuality, you know, proudly. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to, when you modify your body to that extreme, you cannot be shy about having your breasts that big and your butt equally as big. I mean, truly. Um, and so she was quite fascinating. We've got some interviews coming up with uh, the gentleman that created the wheelchair division for Mr. Olympia. Did you guys know huh. that there is a wheelchair um, division at the fitness? I had no idea. So I had no idea, no. Did, yes, fascinating. Um, his name escapes me. I have to look it up before we get off the air, but I'm going to have him on the show. And he's going to talk about, you know, the, the, the stereotypes and um, the situations that he's come against being in a wheelchair, working in the fitness world, and how it impacts his relationships, his sexuality. It's going to be a fascinating interview. So make sure you're going to check that out. But he's going to come on here next month, or I'm sorry, in January. Um, we also are going to have Miss Olympia on the show. She will be here. Ooh. She won last year. Yes, she's going to have her. We're going to have her here. Beautiful woman. I cannot wait for that. Um, the show was amazing. You're talking about men and women that have phenomenal discipline for their bodies. Whether you like that look or not, to me, it was about the discipline to eat or not to eat, the discipline to work out to that extreme. You know, I gave them a huge, huge clap because that to me was impressive. But I will tell you, wow. we had the best time. I did break two toes. I don't even have a stripper story to tell you. I did it in the room, <laughs> going to the bathroom in the middle of the night, not even a good story. But as I said, 
uh, I was with some some friends of mine, and they actually took their daughter to a um, to the big stripper club in Vegas, the biggest one there. Um, wow. And where where our own um, Charlie was performing. Now, Charlie, if you don't know. She has been on Brown Sugar a couple of times. She is a circus performer. We're going to have her back on this year. Um, and she is also an exotic dancer. She she proudly owns her stripper world. So she says, Doc Val, you know, you got VIP treatment. So, you know, myself, my husband, you know, the mother and daughter. <laughs> You know, we're at this strip club, right? And there's a line to get in, you know, there's a line. Do you want the limit to come pick you? We're like, no, we can get there. You know, we're good. So we go in there and, you know, the men are, you know, it's mostly men, right? That are in the line. So my name was at the door. So, you know, I walk past all the guys in the room. They're like, who she thinks she is? Got VIP treatment, didn't have to pay anything, got the table front and center, you know, got That's treated right. like royalty. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Charlie did, you know, she's a, a, a great dancer. She's also, you know, a trained acrobat artist. So her dancing is very vigorous when she's doing it. It's not the typical, let me go in a pole oh. and scroll around. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. she had actually did an act on an on a on a rope, and she busted her eye vessel, so her eyes were bleeding. It, she looked oh no, well, what? Really jacked How? up. Yeah, Ooh. she really did. Oh, oh, that's, that's yeah. awful. It was, but she says, "Don't." I'm like, "Well, you can make a whole theme out of it. Make it a pirate act. No one needs to know that your eye is busted." And she Why was is that like, a "Pirate." <laughs> Because she could make it a pirate act. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> they put a patch on her eye. No one needed to know. But it was so much fun. So we're going to have all those clips. So I'm telling you this. So you guys get your butts over to YouTube and go ahead and check out all the shenanigans. I have clips all over the place. Go on my TikTok. Go on Instagram to catch up on all the shenanigans that were going on at the Olympia Fitness. I'm telling you what, I'm going to go back next year. I want brown sugar there next year. We might even have a booth um, working back there with the Mr. Olympia Fitness. So we've got some things working. Um, so make sure that you keep guys listening and following because you never know where we're going to end up in your city, in your state or your country for that matter. So we only have a couple more minutes. I want to get into a couple of things before we have to go to, to, uh, end our show. And I'm sure Katie is like, Doc, we got to end soon. I got two minutes, Miss Katie. I got two. I'm going to knock it out real quick. So I, I talked to you guys about things that we can do or you can do with your partner that can bring you guys closer, but really it's a partner checkup that you can do to check into, to see how your relationship is going. I know therapists have used some of these models for a long time. So I'm going to talk about a couple of them. All right. The first one that you can do, if you want to kick out the new year, get closer, write a letter to your partner, not type it, write it. And write in that letter things that you appreciate and admire and and your attractiveness to them. Write that out. That's going to help your partner really see how much you really love and appreciate them. And, you know, I will tell you that one, Gerd and I have done that a couple of times in our past relationship. We have done that for each other. And it kind of like makes you say, oh, that's why we fell in love. So write out letters to each other. That's an easy one. Another one that you can do, because, you know, couples live in the same household. You argue, you fuss, you fight. And I tried this because I'm a little hot-headed and my husband's a little bit cooler. But now we start to do something and it's working. We hold hands down when we argue. Can, would y'all do? Yes, I know. Interesting. Do I'm holding your hand, pulling you, and going like that. <laughs> no, you're not going to splice them up trees. <laughs> yes, and it works. It really does work. I can hold see hands. that. I can see yeah. that. 
I'm telling you, I want y'all to send me an email and let me know if you find that instead of when you're arguing, because it's going to happen, but you're arguing and you're holding hands. Send us an email. All right. And not to, not to hold his hand and pull him to you to cut his throat. I'm not talking about that kind of holding hands. Treats. I'm talking about holding his hands lovingly. All right. Don't act a fool. But see if that works. That's a really good one, I think, is to do a check in just by holding hands. You'll be amazed how the temperature in the argument will change. Why are you cracking up? Because I can just, honestly, I can see me and be like, come in with your stupid, let me hold your dumb hand. <laughs> you know, it's really hard to cuss them out when you. It's hard to cut them out when you're holding this hand, though. It's hard. I try. Don't let me. Please dive back up. I would tell you, I, I tried that, and I could, I could cuss a little bit. I could be a sailor if I get right. And I really could not get right. I'm holding his hands, you know, looking in his eyes. I was like, oh my god, I, I just feel like I have to be nicer. I can't really go off on him. So let's go. Oh, you damn man. <laughs> you are a fool. Straight up fool. Well, listen, y'all. As Teresa's back here ruining my check-in moment, we have had another fun show on Brown Sugar. I think we're at the closing end. And Teresa's back here rolling, y'all. You got on the video. She's literally sweating off our eyelashes right now. She's cracking up in the background. But this has been fun. It's all about relationships. I'm going to put the rest of this up on our YouTube. And we're about to go to TikTok, by the way. So make sure you go over to TikTok where we're going to be live talking about this. So go to TikTok and check us out. And we've got some fun stuff coming up. Great announcements. Tracy's back. Her still rolling. And you know by now what we say in Brown Sugar Confessions. We want you to stay safe and to play safe. And we will see you guys next week. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to another episode of Brown Sugar Confessions on Power 1017. Go to our Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram page at Brown Sugar Confessions to like, share, and follow. Stay safe and play safe. We'll see you next week. Bye for now.